because like that up smash can be pocketed, so can the Nikita, uh, and so can the um, grenades. The grenades I probably won't be expecting to see, um, you know, outside of like maybe using the iframes to avoid the explosions or whatever. Right. But like that that up smash mortar and the um, the Nikita can be thrown back at these rather powerful projectiles after the pocket boost comes out. But B-Rice, definitely a character uh, or a player who likes to play super aggressive and up close, despite the fact that Isabel really doesn't generally play in that style. Yeah, not really a, a common sight for a character like Isabel, but despite that, B-Rice is going to be rocking it pretty well. Uh, so far, so good for the both of these two. Seems like B-Rice is trying to find a good opportunity to close in. Seems to do so. Responds with a forward tilt, but now we got c getting a dash tech into a grenade and even an Ozmash to catch a landing that was a little bit too close uh, for VRS to be able to do so safely. And uh, interesting interaction there with the uh, downbeat with the Lloyd Rocket. It seemed like Seabass uh, had like be out of that area super like soon and didn't really sustain too much damage from that one. Yeah, I think it got triggered and um, Seabass wasn't directly on top of it, so it didn't chain into itself really well. Uh, something to that effect that happened. But, um, ooh, Seabass gonna live because of the C4. Uh, I, I thought they didn't have enough time to do that, but they proved me wrong. But now B-Rice has them off stage and up in the air again. And there's that jab into down smash. Something tried and true that B-Rice really likes to do when their opponent's at the corner of a platform or the ledge like that. Yeah, very interesting there to see that play out. But now here we are, gets the Nikita in the middle of the nooch, which is very interesting to see. But here we go, we got the Nikita once again. Very interesting use of the Nikita. Uh, I feel like that's something that BRS might start to call out and start to pocket uh, if it gets a little bit too ridiculous. We might even see that right now. Nope, not quite just yet. But still, good pressure, good job from Seabass, utilizing the Seaport to the fullest extent, tying up the stock count with only an 18% deficit. And uh, Seabass goes high, but unfortunately, they stick the C4 on the stage, not oh, under no. their legs, and they're gonna unfortunately fall off stage and lose their stock early. Oh no, that, yeah, that can't be good. But, I mean, I feel like Seabass has come back from a couple of deficits like this in the past, but against a character and a player who's so good at taking advantage of disadvantage from the other player's end, uh, BRS is not gonna be one to let that slide for free. Absolutely not. Uh, and you can see b you know, recognizing that they can play passively right now. Uh, they don't have to... They don't have to hang back right now, uh, or they don't have to be too aggressive, honestly. All things considered. Uh, they can afford to just make sure their opponent can't do anything, uh, anything lethal at this rate. Right, not, can't, can't afford too many big mistakes if they want to keep themselves in this first game. Good follow with the up air, but it's not going to be dealing for too much damage right now. Good down throw, and really good back air, actually. That is not a uh, get-up option punish that I see very often. Oh, right. there we oh, go. Oh, unfortunate. The US tried to use that pocket in Nikita from just a second ago um, to uh, catch Seabass unaware. Seabass actually going off stage, uh, but having that mortar there to cover. Right now, 120% still going to be pulling out to the stock, but an up air catch from B Rice is going to be closing out the first game of this set. And, uh, not a bad start here for Seabass, despite being down a game, seems to be uh, pretty adept at uh, catching out a lot of these options. It just seemed like that unfortunate mishap with the uh, lack of a down be available to recover off stage on that second stock. Uh, it was really the only thing holding him back for a much closer game and potentially a win. Um, I can Backstage is asking if he can pocket Cypher. I don't think so. Could uh, be wrong. I'm inclined to believe you cannot. I don't think Three, you Yeah, because I don't think you're able to reflect go. it either. I think it just counts. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm thinking. It kind of counts as a physical. That's interesting, though. Um, it's definitely something to, to think about, but I don't believe, uh... I don't believe you can... Uh, I, I know you definitely can't when Snake is using it, but, um... When, when Snake is not using it, maybe. I give it, like, a 15% chance of being able to, but I don't think so. Right. Maybe not, but we'll have to see how that progresses here. We're on the sec same stage before. Second game in the set, so we're gonna have to see if uh, CUS makes any 
uh, adaptations. Like, there is the obvious that we pointed out, you know, don't SD if you don't have to, which is usually never, you know, I, I never recall a situation where you need to SD. <laughs> so, you know, just try to avoid doing that, and I think we should be getting ourselves a much closer game to cover. Hey, man, when you're thinking about SDing, don't. Yeah. And you'll win every game. Unless you're like, yeah, yeah, unless you're like Chrome, like, uh, like Frost on Chrome who can, like, SD, but, like, take your spot first, uh, maybe don't. Maybe just pretend you don't. Yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, but right now, B-Rice does have Nikita in the pocket. Uh, if they throw it out, it could kill. Um, ooh, uh, ooh, actually, um, I think Seabass dropping those grenades uh, and, and, and uh, having them on the ground whenever B-Rice tries to... Fishing pole could be a good option in the future, considering what we just saw. Yeah, I'm starting to think that too here, but check it out. Solid catch there from Seabass, who's going to be tying up this stock count. Uh, but here we go. Solid follow-up wow. there from D-Rice for 64%. And now, things are starting to look a little bit more slant in his favor. And his neutral is being dominated right now by D-Rice. Right, but right now, I was going to say Seabass in a good position to possibly end up winning. Where is he? Oh, yeah, a little bit down What did B-Rice do to him down there? I... To be honest, it was messed up. You might... It was like Sour Spot there and then like followed by Ford here. I was like, to be honest, bro, I don't even want to know. It was kind of messed up. <laughs> it was kind of messed up. Let's check it out. We got Seabass holding his own very well. Uh, able to tie the game with relative speed and with relative ease. And we now have our last stock situation. This looks a lot more doable of a uh, last stock situation. You know, unfortunately, Seabass didn't seem to take my advice this time around uh, in terms of not as being, but you know, there's always next time. And despite that, Seabass is able to tie this up in a much more comfortable last buck situation. But you don't want to get comfortable when you're down a game. So hopefully, Seabass can do what he can to try and tie this up. But B Rice is doing everything he can to bring this to a tool lead. Check it out. He even goes for the grenade and catches an air dodge with a forward smash to close out the second game. What a position. And then. Fine night finish for that second game. Very solid performance. Had to be a genius play. Oh yeah, that was nice. It was very huge. But here we go. We still got one more game for BRS to close out. Or another uh, one more opportunity for um, for CBS to start a little bit of a comeback here. So there, there's quite a bit on the board here in terms of uh, opportunity. Or we could see a double 3-0 in uh, semis for the first time in the This is Tiru. So we're going to have to see how this plays out here in just a second. Or actually, no, just right now. Because I was like, <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. It's like, yep, looks like they're playing to me. So we already have Seabass at 55%. As B-Rice is definitely doing a good job at layering on this early percent. Even getting a little bit of a play off of Seabass's own grenade for additional damage. But here comes the forwards up from Seabass, positioned perfectly to follow up with a down beat. So great foresight there from Seabass to maximize damage on that uh, good neutral option. Yeah, most of uh, Isabel's game plan around, especially uh, projectile characters, is being kind of a rebuttal to them. Uh, you know, like, oh, my projectile is one of the fastest in the game and, uh, you know, comes out really fast. Also, I can pocket anything that you throw at me and throw it back. Uh, it just, it's a really, I guess, uncomfortable matchup for a lot of characters. And Snake's no different considering how bad their disadvantage is sometimes. Yeah, that's true. It can be, uh, very disadvantageous. Disadvantage. Yeah. Here we go. Right. Neutral so, reset. that mortar is pocketed right now. Yeah, right now it's been pocketed. Uh, we're gonna have to see how B Rice ends up applying that here. I can only imagine he's gonna like follow up. Oh. Yep. Okay, follow up that, jab. Nope, that is actually not what I was gonna say. I was gonna wait for him to like, you know, get caught up in like a down B and then get the up smash, like punish, you know, with the mortar, but uh no, it was just jab, jab, up smash, and that seems to have checked out perfectly fine for B Rice. Okay, so something I just noticed a second ago is that whenever B Rice can pocket grenade, it keeps its original timer uh, since it's been pulled. So if you pull one very close to, you, you pocket one very close to when it's about to blow up, uh, and you pull it back out, it's gonna blow up immediately. Uh, yes, that is true. That is definitely something that's worth considering there. Which is kind of interesting considering normally it's a reset for most other items. Yeah, more often than not it would be considered that, but that seems to be a. Uh... 
a little bit different this time around, but let's see how this is shaping up here. Uh, for Seabass, as he gets the up tilt, closes out the first stock for this match on B-Rice. And now we have ourselves a tight stock count, but at 117, it might not be tight for much longer. So right now, B-Rice in a very good position. No damage on the second stock. And Seabass is desperately trying to mount the defense, but B-Rice just opting to not approach whenever they don't feel like it. And you know what? Yeah, when you're in the lead like that, go for it. Yeah, no complaints here from that. That sounds about right to me. Look, man, when you're trying to win, you can do whatever you can to win. And putting yourself in, uh, you know, a, a proverbial minefield that Snake can throw out isn't very high on a lot of people's to-do list if they're trying to win. Right. Okay, let's see how this plays out now. There we go. We got ourselves a good forward tilt from Seabass, uh, adding on some additional percentage. Um, oh, almost gets the up tilt, but not quite going to be able to land. Instead, gets a little bit of a down tilt and a, enough time to punish even further with a forward tilt. So we got ourselves a pretty solid setup. Get the down smash to tie up the game, and here we are once again, but potentially for the final time in the set if we now find ourselves in a tied stock count. But it's right about now when VRS likes to step up, just like you're seeing now, for an explosive 41% damage. If you see that with a much better response, getting a uh, back here, this time getting a down here with that additional percent. So we're seeing all kinds of good options like coming up from CBAS to keep himself in this last stock this time around. Yep, absolutely. Man, I gotta be real with you. Um, I'm very surprised that Seabass is, is in this thing to the degree that they are. And you know, it, we could be seeing a very, I don't want to say easy win, but you know, I, I think as the percent start to climb, Snake definitely has an easier time killing uh, than Isabel does. I'm inclined to agree with that there for sure. Here we go, solid forwarder there from V-Rice. It seems like Seabass is pulling out in front this time around in this last box situation. Which is very good for him here. We're seeing a little bit of adaptation, a little bit more Nikita too. Uh, we're gonna see if potentially Virus wants to pocket that, or maybe if he's just trying to wait for a better option to punish. Him. No, they. I don't think they want to pocket that. I think that's that's why the Nikita's the option because Mortar's in the pocket, and with the uh, knockback growth because of the uh, pocketed bonus. Um, I think that's the thing that B-Rice wants to keep. Oh, yeah, you're right. We get the side heat, but it's going to be trading this time around. So Seabeth is still going to be in the safe. There we go. That us smash is coming out, but it's not really going to be making that much of a connection with anything there. It seems to have just kind of ditched it in favor of a better option. There's a good four tilt, though. Speaking of good options from Seabass. And there we go. We have a pretty good setup with the mortar and the down beat, but B-Rice is still going to be able to get his way through. The grenade in tangent with the Nikita is coming out. And things are starting to heat up with the dash attack. Seabass putting B-Rice at 167%, but Seabass is hanging on at 123, and B-Rice is finding themselves in a... This will be a re-grab, Taco. Yeah, no invincibility on the re-grab. No punish! Oh, not straight away, but now we got a down B. And B Rice is gonna be fortunate. What could have been the last game to need to win the uh, the set, and uh, B C Bass is still gonna be in hanging in here. Two to one. We could be a shifting of the momentum after that one. Uh, oh, that was yeah. a really smart play towards the end there from C Bass to you know very little overextension when they were on that last stock. Played a very good advantage state, never getting too close to um, B Rice whenever they're trying to combo and. Uh, Hey, I, I, that, was a, that was a great play all around. And we're going to be seeing the FD counter pick, which is a counter pick that B-Rice used to great efficiency uh, this weekend at AZSL Finals. Right. Yeah, this, this has definitely been a one heck of a contention here. But here comes Final Destination for the counter pick from B-Rice. What do you think about this season's matchup? Well, I got to admit, Snake likes the stage. But B Rice likes to stage a lot, and I think player comfortability is a lot more important than character comfortability sometimes. Uh, and B Rice, as you can see right now, very, very much so in the advantage on this stage right now. As they're looking for a zero to death. 116%, and not a single thing to show yet for C Bass and things. But here we are, we got some good shield pressure additionally from B Rice. Good grab, we got a down throw going to the side beam, not going to be able to connect. Neither does the down beat from B Rice, but here comes Seabass with the dash attack. First hit of the game for him here, going a bit too far off stage. I stay corrected as D is able to make it back onto the stage, gets a nice forward tilt to put B Rice off stage. 
and let's let's see what his uh, option is here to try to play edge guard. Oh well, it's gonna be edge guard. I was like, right as I said it, no, the yeah. just uh, comes in swinging with those four days. He's gonna be able to find himself onto the stage. Good down there into there, and BR is going to be catching what would have been a ledge grab with a down smash to put him up a stock of only 43% sustain. That was a good first stock for BR, well executed, very little damage, but that second stock's looking even more explosive somehow, uh, with already 67% on the board. Again, it's this disadvantage state from Snake that's so brutal here. Uh, no platforms for Snake to escape to, so that means they have to be landing in the belly of the beast at all times. Uh, B-Rice being able to cover such a wide threat range uh, so frequently is really layering off this damage incredibly fast. Yeah, layering on damage incredibly fast. You said it yourself. But now we have CMS at 102%. And uh, B Rice is at, uh, at 81. Still on this first stock. So uh, B Rice is very much in control of this stage and this match right now. Well, right as I say that, it looks like CMS is regaining a little bit of control. But look at that. B Rice more than ready to cover that stage once again. And uh, now things are starting to look B Rice. Uh, B Rice is really good at just recognizing when they need to approach and when they don't need to. Uh, and, you know, an, an opponent who isn't approaching from a mid range as opposed to a long range is so threatening uh, that it, you really want to. It really starts to show your panic options. And a high level player like B Rice can absolutely um, be ready to uh, recognize and capitalize on those when the moment presents itself. Correct, and here we are. Last stock potentially here for C Dash in on Wow! Oh my gosh, yeah, that was nice. All the way up to 71%, we already find ourselves in this last stock. And good down air, but not going to connect all the way, but a good catch on the jump back air is going to be landing B Rice a solid pair of what, whatever the heck Snake is wearing uh, on this for uh, taking the first stock. He can just say boots. It's okay. I don't think he wears name brand anyway. That's I was like, yeah, I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's like the sponsored name brand. I don't, I don't know what kind of a. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they're like. He's not rocking like, those Yeezys. I'll, I'll like tell that. you that much. Yeah, no, no October students. Uh, whatever, whatever military grade they gave. Oh no. Uh oh. And yeah, uh, I think that's gonna, do right, the that's gonna <laughs> do right there. That's gonna do right there. Okay, B. B. R. S. Didn't even try to go for the downer. They're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like the escort. Uh, I like the escort to the blast. I'll just make sure you don't do this. So. 